Hey guys, thanks for stopping by the channel. Real quick, I wanna to talk to you about this transmission removal video. Uh, so we're removing the automatic transmission from a 2002 Pathfinder. This is a four wheel drive model. It uses the ATX 14A transfer case. That's the one with the plastic dial on the dash opposed to the lever that sticks up from the center console with the TX10 models. This is just the removal. It does not include reinstallation. Um, I wanted to talk to you about my intentions for this video. So right now I'm sitting here in 2022. My intention now is for this to be just merely a supplemental visual aid for removing the transmission. Do not use this as a guide or a how-to to get this done. Please get the factory service manual or Haynes or Chilt manual that has the proper steps in order how to do this. Uh, the reason I'm telling you that is because the footage or clips you're about to see was recorded back in 2020 when I did this project. Uh, the project was a success, a success by the way. Uh, I've got over 12,000 miles on the transmission, no issues there. But I started making this video with the intention of it being a in-depth guide on how to replace the transmission. By the time I got this done, uh, it was just a hot mess. I skip steps, I do steps out of order, I mislabel things. I'm just bad at talking, bad at holding the camera. There was potential there to cause problems for people if they were relying this, relying on the video to get the job done. So that's why I'm stepping in now to kind of forewarn you, clear my conscience, say it's just a visual guide. I talk like I know what I'm doing. And I know enough to get it done, but I made it way harder than what it had to have been. So as visual aid, if I could save someone five minutes here and there, maybe save someone, you know, 30 minutes on something they've been stuck on by a visual aid, perfect. That's what I'm hoping to do with this right here. That And that's all. Chop this up into chapters. Uh, just scrub to the section you're looking for. If this vehicle configuration matches your vehicle configuration, great. Hopefully I've got a good enough shot in there for you to show you how to uh, get in there and get something disconnected. Uh, if not, I certainly apologize. So with that, you've been forewarned. <laughs> um, a little bit uh, about this project, uh, what was going on with it. Um, the original transmission was uh, failing to engage in reverse from time to time. You'd have to blip the throttle uh, to get it to grab reverse. So I knew this was the beginning of the end, so I had sourced a junkyard transmission from a wrecked 2004 Pathfinder. So there's a 2002, that's what I'm driving, 2004 is what I pulled from. They had two different transfer cases. I'll touch upon this at the end of the video. Uh, I also have a video on my channel dedicated to converting the style transmission to work. But I went with that because it was a wrecked unit and I found documentation in the junkyard confirming the lower miles of it. It was like 144,000 opposed to what I had currently on my own vehicle of 225. So it seemed to be a good candidate. So I did the swap, uh, changed the tail shaft housing around uh, so it would fit and match up with the uh, transfer case shifter linkage that I have on my unit. I do want to give some advice. If you're going to go the route of a junkyard pull for a new transmission, uh, you want to get a wrecked unit. I would not go for many of these just sitting there that aren't wrecked. Um, my personal opinion is if a Pathfinder is not in a junkyard because of wreck or rust, it's a 50-50 on it being the engine or transmission. I find seems like there's slightly more of these for sale with bad transmissions than you find with bad engines. So I would just assume a non-wrecked Pathfinder in a junkyard has at least a 50-50 chance of it being a bad transmission. If you're doing this project to replace a rear main seal, do not use a Haynes or a Chilton manual to do that. Uh, it oversimplifies the project, does not tell you that you need to remove the VQ35 upper oil pan. Um, and that basically is another 50% more work that you haven't done. So if you're on a, a time crunch to get this done and you don't have that extra day to drop the upper oil pan and reseal it and everything to get through your room and seal, yeah, you're, you're in big trouble. So use the factory service manual for a rear main seal. 
I also have a video about this on my channel if you wanted to see um, what it looks like if you're uh, in big trouble with that. And so with that, I will turn you over to this old video footage and take care, y'all. If you're fortunate enough to do this project in your own driveway, you want to make sure you have some pretty decent jack stands capable of providing an up, upward travel as you'll need to be able to clear the transmission on a transmission jack. Right now, by feeding the tallest part of the bell housing in, I can feed it in right here. And that's with almost 24 inches of clearance. Just barely fits. And of course, after you check your clearance to make sure the transmission can slide in and out from underneath the vehicle, make sure your jack has enough travel to meet the transmission. Mine does not, but scrap wood easily take care of that issue. If you have power seats, now is your chance to scoot the seat forward so you have better access to the bolts on the back side of the seat. Pry the trim pieces off. Expose the 14 millimeter bolts. Begin removing the bolts. After unbolting the rear feet of the seat, go ahead and scoot your seat back to give you better access to the front bolts. <clears throat> you may want to consider tilting your seat forward. I am not, however, as I'm going to be pulling off this material and replacing this material so I want this folded back so I can remove this material easily but you just have two more 14 millimeter bolts one here one there um, <clears throat> before you start unhooking wires make sure you disconnect your battery and wait three minutes per the factory service manual when pulling the driver's seat you'll have some wires that become disconnected, whereas some get to remain connected. However, some of these will be attached with zip ties. Passenger seat removal is <clears throat> nearly identical to the removal of the driver's seat. However, there are only three plugs that get removed and there are two zip ties right here that have to be cut. Uh, if you know what you're doing, you might be able to actually un disconnect these cable harnesses and reuse them, but oh well. In the future, the transfer case removal is going to be blocked by the driver's side exhaust. We're going to need to make a cut along the exhaust to swing this out of the way. If it's not too rusted, you may be able to unbolt at your cats or the other end, or if you still have your secondary catalytic converter slash resonator, you may be able to unbolt from there or you can make another cut if you're not able to unbolt the exhaust flange. Uh, you can use a reciprocating saw. You want to make sure you have carbide tip teeth or some sort of an angle grinder to cut through that. So after making a cut on the exhaust, I then made an effort to remove the bolts from the flange at the catalytic converter. I was able to loosen these. You have to put a wrench on the back side of this flange. 
here and here. The problem I have is the third bolt and nut. You can't get a wrench on the back side of it to hold it still while you remove it from the front side. Uh, I even made an effort with an impact and I still could not get that to come loose. So I'm going to end up retightening these flange bolts. And we're just going to have to make an incision probably about right here it's on a flat straight section of pipe so that way it can weld back together easily. All right, when you're ready to drain the transmission fluid, there's a 19 millimeter wrench. All right, so to drain the trans fluid on an ATX 14A transfer case, you're gonna drain from this plug right here. Uh, this will be done with a 3 8 ratchet. I recommend getting one that's pretty well squared and not worn down. You do not wanna strip this plug out. Uh, before you pull the plug on this, I would recommend locating the fill plug on the back side and verifying you're able to actually remove this plug. If you're not actually able to remove this plug, you will not be able to refill this transfer case. So before you drain it, make sure you can refill it. Get yourself a marker or a paint pen. Mark the relationship of the flanges. You can reinstall it properly. Do a 17 millimeter wrench on the nut, 17 millimeter socket on the bolt, crack them loose. And then once you get the three you can reach loosened, go ahead and release your e-brake. And rotate your drive shaft uh, with the vehicle not in park. When you get the bolt in reach, what you're going to loosen, then go ahead and reset your e-brake. So, removing the drive shaft from the transfer case is just gently sliding straight back and removing it. Uh, the Instructions say to drain the transfer case before doing this. However, I did not do that, so I now have a mess to deal with. All right, so to disconnect the front drive shaft from the transfer case, um, you're gonna be dealing with 14 millimeter nut. That's a 14 millimeter head. You're going to loosen the nut. The head squares up and backs up to this U-joint flange. Uh, so this gets a little tricky because you don't have enough clearance here to fit a socket, which is really what we need with a breaker bar. So you're gonna be using a wrench. When you use a wrench, you're not going to have enough leverage. You're going to have to double your wrench. <clears throat> when you do this, you want to make sure you use the enclosed end. 
make sure, if at all possible, if you have it available to you, get a six-pointed wrench as opposed to this 12-point wrench. I also do not recommend doing this with a Harbor Freight wrench. You want some, at least some medium grade tool like a Craftsman so you don't round off this nut. If you use the open end of the wrench, it will flare out both sides and it will slip and start rounding off the nut. So if you have the TX10 transfer case, I believe you can put it in four wheel drive and put your transmission in park that will effectively lock your drive shaft in place so you can start turning wrenches. However, if you have a, a ATX 14A such as mine, you're going to have to wedge something in there in that front U joint to keep this drive shaft stationary while you remove bolts. After you've loosened the nuts, go ahead and wipe up your WD-40 and grease, whatever you have on there. And make sure you mark your drive shaft flanges with a paint pen or a marker or some sort of etching tool. I believe what this does is help keep everything balanced in the drive line. Removal of the center console goes something like this. If you have the manual shift knob right here, uh, I believe you would unscrew the handle I'm not sure exactly about the boot removal, but um, if you have the dial here, that's how you do it on this. To remove the remaining portion of the center console, we're supposed to remove some screws and then pull back on this after we have the e-brake lifted. Alright, so the location of the screws holding in your center console are going to be located here. There's one on the opposing side. There are two up here in these locations. There is one that hangs out down here. And then under here, you're going to have to pry this material off with the screwdriver. When this comes off, you'll see the last one down in there. At this point, you're supposed to shove the whole console backwards and locate all the wires that are going to be holding this down. On this particular unit, it looks like there's just one wire holding this thing down. Uh, looks like that's for the e-brake sensor. I would anticipate if you had a QX4, an 03 Pathfinder, 04 Pathfinder with heated seats. I believe your heated seat buttons are down here on the center console. You will probably have some sort of wires that hold those on. You should be able to maneuver this up and over. I was able to remove this even with the vehicle and park. I focused my efforts on the e-brake being pulled back as far as it can go and forcing it out of this opening. With the tail end lifted high up to the ceiling, I was able to work the front end up and over and back to remove the centerpiece. Now you'll get an indicator of how much of a slob you are, or at least your previous owner. 
in my case, when I bought this vehicle, the whole entire vehicle looked about like this, but I never bothered cleaning on the center console, so. To remove the shifter, go ahead and put it in park. This will put this in a position where you can remove this piece right here. Pull up on this to give some slack. Use your thumb, bend down on the gray tab, pop this connection out. On this side of the shifter, get a good picture of the number of threads showing in case you accidentally turn the turnbuckle and lose your shifter alignment. You're going to pop out this cotter pin. And make sure you don't lose it. And then you can slide off your shift linkage. On the back side of the shifter, there's a harness. You need to disconnect this harness. Removing this metal plate is going to give us some access to the bell housing. Uh, so you're gonna need to undo some snaps where the carpet snaps to some brackets, both sides right here. I don't know if that was glue or what, but that pulls back. There's a trim piece right here you pop out with your fingers. There's a plastic screw to hold the carpet in an adapter right here you know disconnect that the bell carpet is uh sounds like it's velcroed in on the other side if you peel this back you can pop the floor ventilation loose from right here gives you access to some more screws All right, so if you're looking at the transmission and transfer case from the inside of the vehicle, how this breaks down is this section forward is the transmission. This section here backward is the transfer case. Uh, on this ATX 14A transfer case, we have some sort of solenoid. It's like some sort of gear housing. It's like an actuator arm. And then here's the arm that goes to the transfer case. Um, we're gonna have to disconnect this nut right here to free this assembly. Loosen and remove the nut. And disconnect the actuator arm. Reinstall the nut onto the arm. To remove the shift linkage solenoid, you're gonna to need to remove 12 millimeter bolt, another 12 millimeter bolt, and lastly, the third one right there. With this assembly loosened, you can pull it back. Now you should have access to that bolt. I don't know why, how the wire harnesses disconnect from this yet, so I'm just gonna let it hang here for the meantime. All right, to get these free, you're actually gonna to have to come around to the top of this, remove the 10 millimeter nut on top, uh, 10 millimeter bolt on top. Um, I found it best to grab some pliers, grab a hold of this metal, angle it down, or whichever way you need to 
get it so you can slide a wrench in there to get on top of this to access that bolt head. Once you take that bolt out, you'll see there's a bracket on top that's sandwiching these wire harnesses in there. And when you remove that top bracket, you're able to push them off the lower bracket to get them freed up. On the ATX14A transfer case, you're gonna have some harnesses you have to disconnect up in here. It's one, two. This one stays put. Three. And lastly, four. On the ATX14A, uh, you'll have a wire here. I'm not sure exactly what function of this is, but it is very hard to remove. But you do have to press down initially on the end of this tab and then use a rather large screwdriver and twist pry and then start compressing along the remainder of this tab here. Uh, you'll probably need to use two screwdrivers to pry it out. With all the cables disconnected and the linkage unhooked, um, we now need to support the transmission uh, because we are now going to remove the cross member, which is presently holding up the transmission. So 14 millimeter bolts. You probably need a breaker bar to break them loose like I had to do. 19 millimeter socket and a breaker bar. And go to town on the trans mount or cross member. You want to make sure two things when you do this that you loosen both sides before you start to remove it and Make sure your jet, your transmission is well supported by the jack. Uh, you do not want to let the engine support the weight of the transmission entirely, as you'll be basically crushing your firewall, uh, possibly destroying your motor mounts if you let the engine take the brunt of the weight of this. Also, you've un disconnected your drive shaft. Um, it's being supported by this cross member, so make sure when you pull this cross member out, you don't get whacked in the face by the drive shaft. So, I do have the transmission as low as I can drop it. However, we're still connected on the drive shaft splines inside that connection. This solenoid motor is still hitting the gas tank guard, so we're going to remove the gas tank guard. It's like a series of various bolts around here, and you can expect to use lots of WD-40 and possibly break some of these bolts off. So it's a good idea to figure out what bolts you're dealing with when you're going to disconnect the transfer case from the transmission. So what we've got here is the bolt pattern. I believe it is the same for both styles of transfer cases. This view is if you were looking towards the back of the car from say like where the engine is. Uh, it specifies that the top three bolts, the bolt head 
faces the front of the vehicle, whereas the other bolts, the bolt head faces the rear of the vehicle. The three volt bolts are accessible from in the cabin. These bolts are here, here, and here. Um, the other bolts you'll have to get from underneath the vehicle from the other direction. As you remove these bolts, you'll either want to label the bolts or put them in some sort of diagram representing the bolt pattern so you don't get them mixed up. So you'll just simply punch this through the hole in the cardboard. Your 10 o'clock transfer case mounting bolt is in a really tight spot. Uh, I found out that if you bend back the heat shielding, should give you just enough throw to be able to crack it loose for a breaker bar in a socket. I'm going to leave one bolt loose, but still installed as a retaining bolt. Um, I am now going to put a jack under the transfer case and I will start removing the lower mounting bolts to this. Before you remove the last of the bolts for the transmission bell housing, of course make sure all your vacuum lines and electrical connectors are unhooked, as well as any brackets that uh, mount to the exhaust or body. You want to make sure that your jack or whatever you're using to support the transfer case is strapped down and uh, balanced as far as weight goes as best as you can. And I would recommend unhooking all bottom transfer case bolts first and then making the last bolt you remove a top bolt. At this point I have all of the transfer case bolts removed with the exception of this one, which does not have enough clearance to come out, but it is no longer threaded. And The very last one on the top I have loosened. So what is holding the transfer case on right now is the transmission jack beneath it and the dowel pins uh, inside of this case. On the bottom side of the transfer case where it meets the back of the transmission there are two notches in there that you can use to pry the two pieces apart with a screwdriver. Again, you want to make sure you have partially threaded bolts up top and your load supported by a jack stand when you begin this. You may have to do a little bit of prying at the top. Once you get the slack taken out of your bolt, go ahead and remove it the rest of the way. Right now, it is only being held in by one of the two dowel pins. Okay, looks like we are disconnected. So we got to be careful when we pull this transfer case straight back so we don't bind up that seal and destroy the seal. 
So at the moment, the only thing holding the transfer case in place is the transmission jack. All bolts have been removed and the dowel pins top and bottom are now clear. We're going to have to slide the transfer case back. We have to make every effort possible to keep the jack stand at the present height until we clear the uh, spline shaft on the back of the trans transmission. If we put the seal in a bind, it will damage the seals presently. This exhaust bracket that mounts to the transfer case is preventing the backward travel of the uh, transfer case. All right, so it looked like we were just kind of a little mess. There was a little tab that was trying to pull these wires down with the transfer case. We were kind of caught up in this mess. I don't even know what portion of this is from the factory and what's from the exhaust shop. I don't even know, but just kind of move things out of the way as you see fit and should be good to go. All right, now the key is to try our best to lower the transmission and transfer case in unison without creating extreme angles on the seal that connects the transfer case and transmission together. As you can see, the uh, spline shaft is still inside the unit. All right, with the tank guard partially dropped down, it gives us a little more clearance, so we're gonna try to work this back. And we're free. Looks like I do not I have some sort of vacuum line connected. Let's see that vacuum line connects. It looks like there's two of them actually. So we'll disconnect those real quick. Make sure you don't scratch or scuff or bang this smooth surface on any other objects. Initially I thought I had cleared the strap under all the cables but I failed to do that and I had it over the cable so when I was pulling the transfer case down it was pulling on this main wire harness that goes around. Uh, looks like this main wire harness is still tethered by a couple zip ties that I need to cut. And if you're blessed enough to have enough clearance, you should just be able to slide the transfer case out from under the vehicle. With the transfer case removed, <clears throat> I want to change jacks for the transmission. So with the only thing supporting this transmission being a floor jack, let's go ahead and put the cross member back in place um, temporarily until we can change out our jacks. So there's some markings on these. Right now this is upside down. And when you're crawling underneath it, looking up at it, these arrows are supposed to face forward to the engine. Uh, you can also just write driver or passenger on either side if you want to get this oriented properly. One thing to note when removing the dipstick or of course when you're removing bell housing bolts is the dipstick tube on the 3.5 liter configuration 
has a mounting bolt here, here, and then it is also held in right here with the bell housing bolt, which mind you, in my opinion, is tied with this one as being the two hardest to remove bell housing bolts. Uh, until all three of these mounting points are cleared, you will not be able to remove the dipstick. So, and when you do want to remove it, kind of got to wiggle it a little bit. To remove the dipstick tube for the transmission, you'll need to come in to where it enters on top of this flange. There's a 10 millimeter bolt. It's kind of hard to reach. Probably need to use a short wrench to reach that. Trans cooler line is held on some brackets to the pan. We'll have to pop those loose. There's another bolt right up there, the trans cooler bracket that'll need to come out all right so there's some additional uh 10 millimeter bolts that have to come out for your trans cooler lines follow that there is one above the axle here and then there's also one above the engine oil pan so i believe that is six bolts that you have to remove to get some play and movement out of these trans cooler lines. All right, to remove the trans cooler lines, it's a 17 millimeter wrench. They'll usually be on there pretty tight. You do expect this to start dripping trans fluid when you start loosening it. There it goes. After you've unbolted the passenger side trans cooler line from the transmission, we'll have another one to bolt on the driver's side. It's a 17 millimeter bolt right here. Do not lose these bolts. They're uh, kind of pricey if you need to buy a replacement. So make sure you keep that. The washers that come out with it, uh, you can throw those away because you would have bought new ones before you started doing this project because these washers are not reusable. We'll need to remove this cotter pin. It's got a special hook on it. You'll have to pry at an angle with a screwdriver. And you also need to remove two bolts right here. When you've removed the cotter pin and the bolts, go ahead and just slide this off. Set it down out of the way. This will need to be removed. I believe this is a position sensor used for counting the teeth on the flex plate uh, used in somehow the engine calculates its timing and whatnot. But go ahead and I guess you push in. No? Yeah, you gotta hook your blade right in the arrow and drive forward and then pull back on the wires. If it doesn't let go, you gotta push the screwdriver in further. Just pull that out of the way. Uh, we got some mounting, or we got some zip ties around here that we'll probably need to cut. Looks like they are tethered to the engine side thing, so we'll go ahead and cut those so they don't 
get ripped out when we drop the transmission down. So you're going to have these wire harnesses that connect to the transmission. They're going to be for various things such as the sensor to detect what gear you're in as well as the turbine sensor and the other turbine sensor uh, and there's something else I don't know what it connects to but uh, they're not easy to remove from the transmission you're going to want to actually remove this heat shield and disconnect the harnesses right under here uh, do not cut these harnesses if you're in a junkyard or I guess at home for even that matter uh, you will regret it it is very difficult to remove the components from the transmission housing compared to just simply removing the heat shielding and unplugging the connectors the proper way with the heat shield removed that now exposes the wire harnesses <clears throat> If I'm not mistaken, I believe it's one, two, three, four. The first four harnesses, starting from front to back, are the ones we disconnect. I believe the other ones are probably for the transfer case, which we've already removed. Additionally, you'll need to remove this nut to open this metal bracket to release the cable. So when you've disconnected, you should look like something like this. And it appears to be the same setup that's on the 04 wire harness. If you do not unbolt the torque converter from the flex plate before you start undoing all your bell housing bolts to drop the transmission you're going to destroy that torque converter seal uh, possibly your input shaft seal as well uh, that torque converter and the seals and the shaft are not designed to support the weight of the transmission like the bell housing is so make sure you get that starter pulled out go in there and remove all four of the torque converter to flex plate bolts and back the torque converter off of the flex plate before you begin dropping this down. On the 3.5 liter Pathfinders, uh, you're gonna find that there's really only two bolts holding the starter in. The first bolt, it's right here, it's actually a bell housing bolt that holds the transmission bell housing to the engine block and it goes all the way through into the starter metal right here. The uh, end of the bolt stops about right here. Um, there's another bolt up top above that. It's on the side of the engine and bell housing. The so when working with the starter, one thing I would recommend is giving yourself some room. Uh, you can pinch the ends of the plastic connector here force it back you can even take your bone housing bolt out or you could even cut the zip tie but either way getting this out of the way opens up a lot more work area if we're handed here in this very limited space we're looking up at the starter for reference we've got our catalytic converter here We've got our uh, oil pan here. So the starter kind of looks like two soda cans. You got the big soda can here. And on this upper side, you've got the smaller soda can. There is a terminal here. Wire is held on by a nut. And the other end of this wire just goes to the other soda can. You don't need to disconnect that. What you do need to disconnect is this right here. I believe that is the positive terminal. I'm trying to, I don't know if there's a way I can show you. Uh, it's held on with a nut onto a stud. 
Um, my 2001 model had a rubber boot over it. It's a black leather boot, or black rubber boot, and it had all sorts of grease and grime on it, so it's kind of hard to see. Yeah, but you had to pull back this little cupped boot, uh, hold it back, and somehow fit a wrench in there. Uh, something to note about these is I believe it's a 10 millimeter nut if it's a factory, like a Calsonic starter, but if it's um, aftermarket, it could be different. I used a, uh, what was it, a Duralast starter from AutoZone, my other one, and the nut that goes over that was actually not a metric nut at all. I think it's like a half inch or something like that. Uh, so. When you go in there and start feeling around with the wrench, just take some extra time. Make sure that it is a metric and that you got the right size. You do not want to round that off. You will be in a world of hurt if you do. Uh, so you'll just simply remove the nut off of here in the back. Leave this disconnected unless you want to take it off. It could be in your way. And then you'll need to remove this bolt and then the bolt above it faces the other way and then you sh and if you've cleared a space with your wires you should be able to force the starter forward towards the grill uh, you'll see a gap form right along here and then just keep bringing it back you'll have to pull it back quite some way in order to get the uh, the gear on the starter teeth to actually clear the uh, engine block. I'll do my best to show how the starter comes out. Just gonna got all the bolts, wires disconnected. Got stuff all in my eye. Pull back. Or pull. Pull towards the radiator. Okay, got a bit of a gap showing now. Wire harness all the way up the top. Push that out of the way. Okay. It won't go any more forward, so I'm going to try to rotate it, see if I can get any more forward movement out of it. Okay, so I'm spinning this. If you're looking at it from the front of the car, I'm spinning it counterclockwise, bring in what I would previously called the soda can it was on the top side it's being rotated down all right so that got me some more backward movement all right so we still are hung up on that gear that connects to the flex plate so let's figure out which way we got to turn it now Okay, so actually, what I call the, uh, I guess it's a solenoid. Uh, that solenoid that was previously sits at the top when it's installed, I have now at the 9 o'clock position. I'm going to push the, uh, the mating surface up. And that gear push up and back and I'm gonna rotate just a little bit more I actually have no idea how much way it goes it's that metal plate I was talking about
Okay. So we've got the little sprocket free. Now we're just got the the exterior of the starter in a bind. Ah oh, man, I'm getting all sorts of crud in my eyes. Yeah, I recommend wearing some safety glasses when you do this. I may have to disconnect trans cooler line. Alright, so I'm back with eye protection now. Okay, so you just got to work at it, but you got to end up with the uh, solenoid at the um, of the smaller cylinder, probably down about the seven o'clock position. Another rotate. Now it's at six o'clock. Somehow, the positive terminal has reconnected to that stud, and that's what's holding us up. There's our starter. So this may have fallen out during a starter removal. If you ever wonder how this goes in, I will show you. Are we done yet? Is that happy? Dad, you can't do baby duty. With the starter removed and the inspection cover removed, you don't have an opening up in there that will give you access to the bolts that hold the torque converter to the flex plate. It's kind of hard to see what you're working with, so I'll give another visual. be facing this end and these are the four bolts that you'll be removing you may not feel any of those torque converter bolts through the starter access hole uh, so what you'll need to do is go up to your crankshaft put on a 19 millimeter socket and turn the engine clockwise a few degrees at a time until you can feel one of those uh, bolts for the flex plate and torque converter. So right now we have an array of extensions um, going into the belt housing. We have a 14 millimeter socket. Um, it's a very tight fit. 
lot of stuff in the way. Hard to get a good angle on wrenches. I'm actually going to try to run my extensions all the way through the subframe out to in front of the subframe to where I can hit this with an impact wrench. We'll see how it goes. We're going to do a quick blip with the impact gun to see if we can get that loose. Apply forward pressure. I think we got it. Let's go check. Alright, so I hit it with the impact. I don't know if we slipped off or if we actually loosened it, but we'll feel for it. Uh, yeah, we loosened it. Excellent. So I removed all four of the flex plate to torque converter bolts. Uh, one thing I've noticed that if you drop one of those flex plate to torque converter bolts down in there, you won't be able. You might be able to reach it up top, but there's like a little recessed area in the engine block right here that the bolt will fall down into. And there's a plug you could take or an Allen wrench and remove the plug with, and the bolt should fire yeah. out. With the transmission weight supported, the jack, go ahead and finish taking off your cross member. To remove the cross member mount for the transmission. This is a 17 millimeter bolt. Yeah. That looks like it's going to need a breaker bar. Okay. If you forgot which way is front and back, there appears to be some sort of arrow on this, and this arrow points to the front towards the engine. All right, so the bell housing bolt patterns is shown as below. You got your four banger version, you got your 3.3 .3 liter and a 3.5 liter. It's a good look of it. So uh, one thing to note on the 3.5 liter is bolt C is backwards, meaning the head of the bolt is on the engine side of the bell housing, right above the starter. 17 millimeters these top one two three four five six are 17 millimeters and these bottom three are 14 millimeter bolts all 17 millimeter bolts are the same length with the exception of bolt c bolt c is a tiny bit shorter and all the others so somehow get it mixed up all 17 millimeters will be this length with the exception of bolt C above the starter that short one goes there the 14 millimeter bolts they're all the same length At this point let's go ahead and carefully lower the transmission Just a little bit. We want to check and see if we have better access inside the cab to work with disconnecting any vacuum lines that we may have missed. And of course, to throw the strap over the top of the transmission as well. Straps hooked up over the top of the transmission. Everything's all secured. Uh, we're gonna try See about accessing some bell housing bolts up in the front. For the bell housing bolts, by dropping the transmission down slightly, you begin to gain access to these. Um, 
you'll just want to make a stack of extensions to snake up in there and get those. Those should be 14 millimeter bolts. Uh, I would suggest starting with the top in the sides first before doing the lower. Those are the hardest, so just start with the hard first, work your way down to the easy stuff, and you should be okay. With the transmission lowered slightly, you'll want to stack a bunch of extensions um, that can reach all the way up to the bell housing bolts. Looks like these are going to be 17 millimeter bolts, at least on the top anyway. Uh, it'd be a good idea to have a friend or somebody hold the stack of extensions still while you put a breaker bar on it. Um, or if you have a really good impact, that could be an option as well. Uh, my impact does not seem to have enough torque to uh, break these loose. In fact, I have broken a 3 8 extension trying this earlier, so I've switched to all half inch extensions and socket now. With the transmission supported by the jack, all bell housing bolts disconnected. Uh, dipstick tube disconnected, vacuum lines disconnected, wire harnesses disconnected, transfer case shift linkage disconnected, oil cooler lines disconnected, oil cooler line brackets disconnected, uh, your torque converter to flex plate bolts have been removed, all four of them. We will start to rock back the transmission. The transmission right now is still going to be stuck on there pretty good with um, the dowel pins. You'll probably have to use some sort of a mallet to uh, help crack those loose. Uh, again, make sure this jack fully has the weight of the transmission supported. Uh, when we start working this back, we do not want to just suddenly drive this back all the way. Uh, if you do that, your torque converter will fall. You need to go slowly and within maybe a, an inch or two, try to find some sort of object that you can use to brace the torque converter to keep the torque converter from falling. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and use a mallet, get a few wax, and up here I can see there's kind of a hairline separation between the engine block and the transmission case, so. Uh, I'm going to go to the other side and do this to loosen the other dowel pin. Alright, so when trying to disconnect the transmission from the engine block, there's a, a little slot right here good to get a flat head screwdriver in there and pry. I would refrain from doing any sort of prying on this hole right here where that sensor was uh, just because um, if you mess up you could cause uh, some big issues for your engine timing. Um, one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a screwdriver in here, pry apart, it'll make a hairline crack seam right here. I'm just going to shove uh, flathead screwdrivers in here and work my way up to pry this off. This side, this dowel pin up towards the top is what's holding this on right now. So we've been have a bit of a gap showing here. Not so much on the other side. Kind of pivot it that way. Okay, looks like it's free. It dropped a little bit, so I'm gonna jack it up. Okay, now before we pull this apart, we gotta figure out a game plan to make sure that torque converter doesn't fall out. Okay, so 
Transmission doesn't want to go any further back, so we'll go ahead and drop it down. Okay, We're getting there. It's pressing on the torque converter, so let's go ahead and lift it up. If it let us, nope. In the body. Oh, I'm sorry. The torque converter is inside the bell housing. We are okay. So that's what we look like there. Got our flex plate, got our torque converter. Just don't let that torque converter fall out. Top of the bell housing has cleared the flex plate. I'm allowing the transmission to descend downward. It is caught on the trans cooler line, so I'll have to pause there. All right, so you'll only be able to drop this down so far before you start binding up on your trans cooler line. Uh, make sure you're not pulling this down with your jack or the straps or anything like that. Um, make sure this gets loosened up. So, make sure you watch your O2 sensors. Um, looks like going further back is not an option for me. So I'm actually gonna have to bring this back forward to clear this uh, protrusion on the casting. All right, so when lowering the transmission on the jack, you're gonna have trouble Right here, it's your O2 sensor. It's going to smear all the way up these as it comes down. Uh, you're gonna fight for every millimeter you have to push the transmission this way to keep it off these wires. Um, you can try to loosen this. I did not have enough slack in the cables to do enough turns to unthread it from the pipe. Um, I am running some sort of aftermarket pipe. So maybe on a factory unit, this exhaust pipe may be pulled back away from the engine a little bit more. I don't know, but that was definitely a problem for me. Um, Another thing that limited my sideways movement away from the uh, O2 sensor was the drive shaft, or I should say the drive shaft flange, the yoke. Um, as you can see, it gouged pretty good right there. Um, so. And you can't really pull backward because the further you pull the transmission back when it's above your obstacles, the wider the transmission gets at this bell housing. Uh, so you want to make sure you keep the transmission bell housing up against this flex plate, but without catching on the flex plate. You don't want to bend this up, especially you don't want to mess up with these teeth at the uh, sensor reads for the engine timing. Uh, of course, make sure your, your uh, torque converter doesn't fall out. So far, I've done a good job of that. Um, try not to turn this uh, flex plate. If you haven't, uh, right now, you have the ability you can mark uh, with a marker on there, the orientation, um, which this goes to the flex plate. All right, so I'll hold 
flex plate with one hand, start dropping her down. Train's cooler lines in the way. All right, so once you get your transmission out, now's a good time to look at a bunch of stuff, take a bunch of photos. Um, if there's anything you need to remove or swap over, now's your time to do it. Also, don't forget to plug up the uh, seal on your torque converter. I'm gonna go through here and look, see if you got any play have any play on that give it a good look don't seem to be any play on this a lot of uh looks like motor oil it would indicate i have a bad rear main seal um you want to plug the dipstick hole I uh, don't want debris getting in there. Uh, just keep your wire harness nice and clean, in good order. Um, this little bit's gonna come out. I'm gonna put it on the donor. For some reason, the one of my donor doesn't have that. I must have pulled it off without knowing it. So this one appears to have some sort of a bracket that the other one does not have. I'll have to figure that out, see what's going on there. Um, hopefully I don't have to swap out tail housings, but if we do, we do. Um, this right here is part of the linkage. Um, that holds that solenoid and actuator for the transfer case. Gotta make sure everything on that is compatible between the two. All right, so looking over the two transmissions, we have the 2002 and the donor 2004. Uh, one thing I did tons of research on is trying to find out if the tail shaft housings or bell housings are the same between the two years. It appears that they are not the same. The what I think it is is that 2004 had the manual shifter, the TX10 transfer case, whereas this one has the ATX14A transfer case. Uh, other than that, I think they would have been the same tail shaft housing. Uh, the bolt pattern appears to be the same. So that's good. But we're gonna have to uh, see about swapping these two tail shaft housings. From what I've read inside there, there is a parking pole assembly. Uh, so I'll have, if I disassemble that, I'll have to make sure I can reassemble that properly. Um, so, hopefully we're not dead in the water. Um, I would like to put the newer transmission in if I can.